As we mentioned in previous sections, the endoscopes have flexible cables containing delicate fiber optics that easily can be broken if bent, crimped, folded, pulled, clamped, or dropped. We recommend whenever possible that they be stored and processed in protective trays. Each endoscope box also includes extra protective caps for the ends of the endoscopes. Keep them near the unit in case caps are lost. It is important to cover the connectors when processing and sterilizing the endoscopes. Sterilization and cleaning instructions are included with each box. At surgery time, the sterilized endoscope is handed into the sterile field. If it was scrolled into place properly, the scrub nurse should be able to lift the tip with one hand and raise the endoscope out of the tray without bending it. The capped connector ends are passed to the circulating nurse near the unit. Throughout the entire process, we strongly recommend that circulators always hold the endoscopes between two fingers to avoid damage to the fiber optic cable. To prevent loss, remove the end caps and place them into a shallow tray. When attaching the cables, it is very important to never pull or push the endoscopes from or into connectors by holding the white cable sheathing. Always grip the metal connectors to prevent damage. There is no set order for connecting the three ends, but the best technique is to insert the light first, and then screw the laser connector into its port. Now you can push the lever on the video adapter with one hand, while inserting the video connector with the other until it clicks into place. If your laser key is turned on with the laser connector in place, and the red stop button out, you will hear an audible tone indicating that the laser has been activated. If you do not hear this tone, make sure the laser stop button is in the out position. A small clockwise twist will assure it is set properly. Now you're ready to focus the image. With the handpiece placed securely on the sterile drape, aim the tip at a piece of the cloth. Begin by pressing and holding the up arrow to increase the illumination. You will see light from the tip of the endoscope and on the monitor's image circle. Bring the image into focus by rotating the focus ring on the video coupler. If the white circle on the screen is getting smaller, keep turning until the image is in focus. If the circle is disappearing, turn the ring in the opposite direction until an image begins to appear. Perfect focus is reached when the edge of the image is a sharp and crisp line. The next step is to set the laser parameters. Beginning on the left of the panel and moving to the right, set the laser power to 0.25 watts on the power display by pressing the up arrow. This may be raised or lowered during surgery at the direction of the surgeon. The next control is for laser duration. Depress the up arrow until the display reads CON. This means that continuous laser power is delivered as long as the pedal is depressed. When the surgeon is ready for the endoscope, you should press the green enable button to activate the laser. Then press the up arrow for the laser aiming beam two or three times to get the 20 or 30 setting. When the white light is reduced, the laser aiming beam should be clearly visible on the screen as a small red dot or donut, and you will see the red glow from the tip of the cannula. The last step is to orient the image for the surgeon. The surgeon should position the endoscope about one inch from the incision and look at the monitor. The orientation of the image can be adjusted at the connection of the endoscope into the video adapter. The circulator should rotate the image until the cornea points upward and the sclera lies below. It may be necessary to refocus the image before entering the eye. The circulating nurse should remain near the system throughout surgery and keep the image upright by adjusting the adapter as the surgeon moves around the eye. While performing ECP, if the surgeon does not control illumination with the foot switch, the nurse may also need to adjust the white light on the E2 console. When the surgeon aims the probe, placing ciliary processes in view, the nurse should adjust the white light till the red aiming beam is clearly visible on the processes. As surgery proceeds, the flat surface of the cannula, known as the tip, may become dirty. It is important for the scrub nurse to keep the tip of the endoscope clean during the procedure. Do this by holding the cannula close to the tip and gently swabbing with a wet instrument wipe to fully clean any viscoelastic or other materials from the surface. If the tip is clean, the image on the screen will be clear and in focus.
When the surgeon is finished with the endoscope, the tip should be wiped again in the same way and the image inspected for clarity. The three connections to the unit are then disconnected, being careful to remove them by holding the connector ends and not by pulling on the white sheathing. Use the release lever to detach the video connector. Protect the ends by replacing all connector caps. Extra caps are included with each endoscope. The circulating nurse then accepts the endoscope as it is passed from the sterile field. Take care to pack the endoscope correctly to avoid breakage of the optical fibers. Please remember that in placing the endoscope back in the tray, it is important to coil it with the working tip at the top as shown. This will eliminate any tangles that can cause damage and will allow for convenient removal from the tray on the next use. A final cleaning of the tip is now performed, this time using an alcohol towelette. These steps are necessary to remove all viscoelastic or tissue from the tip as soon as possible after use and before re-sterilization. It is always a good idea to have a sterile backup endoscope available in case something is wrong or questionable with the first.